Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to the ranch. Dr. Uptown here. Today I'm going to do a redo of an old video of mine. I'm going to use a different pistol in it this time around. Uh, what that video was, was uh, how to uh, replace and adjust your sear spring. And uh, back when I shot it, it was uh, shot in the finest quality 240p that you could get. So uh, now that I got a uh, camera with a, a little better uh, quality video that will uh, shoot it in high definition, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reshoot that one. I probably a couple, three more of these that I'll do over time. Uh, and like I say, just basically reshoot them in high def versus uh, the old uh, standard definition, which uh, makes things hard to see. To uh, get started here, first thing we're going to do is uh, go ahead and remove the magazine out of this pistol. This is the uh, Essex pistol from the Essex Rebuild. And uh, to get where we need to go, we're going to start by uh, removing this uh, mainspring housing, which is this piece right here. It's held in place by a pin here and indexes into the frame down below with a couple of grooves that hold it into place. Right, to go ahead and remove that, just go ahead and knock our pin through. This one is tight enough that we probably can't do it just by hand. Once we've got that out, we'll go ahead and slide that main spring housing out. Next thing we'll need to do is go ahead and uh, remove our grip safety. And to do that we go ahead and put our hammer into the cock position, remove our grip safety up to the halfway point, and wiggle it as we're pulling it out, and it comes directly out. Plunger, spring, and pins, uh, sometimes they go fly and sometimes they don't. Okay, we'll go ahead and ease our grip safety out. And what we're left with is our hammer, hammer bow, and our sear spring. Go ahead and pop our sear spring out. This is the spring that we're going to concentrate on. I'm going to show you a few things in here. I have uh, changed my lighting method a little bit and I'm hoping that that'll give us a little clearer insight on the inside of the pistol. Uh, once we've removed the spring, we have the disconnector here. This is the back of the trigger bow here. And this is the bottom legs of the sear here. The sear, of course, is what engages the hammer and prevents it from falling. The disconnector here resets that sear. And of course, the hammer bow as it goes in and out is what will fire with the sear in combination with the sear. <clears throat> On the frame here you'll notice this notch that's cut into the bottom of it. What that notch is, is it is the index point for this leg that's on the uh, inside of the sear spring. It sounds like Tactical Harley has awoken from his nap. So I will pause here momentarily. On our sear spring, most of them are, uh, you'll find in this fashion, they're three legs. Um, there, there is an aftermarket one out there where the center spring is actually split into two smaller springs. Um, whether it works better or not, I, I don't know. Um, the way this spring works is it sets in the pistol and it actually gets its spring tension by being compressed by the main spring housing which comes up over the top of it. This first leg of the sear spring is what controls the actual sear itself. And how that does that is you'll notice that it's got this notch on it and it will actually set on the sear in this configuration here. I'll pull that in a little bit so maybe you can see it a little better. That's how that would engage on 
the sear itself. So that sear leg sets on there so that it is in that basic configuration. The center leg, and you've seen this before on several of the rebuilds because a lot of times what we'll do is we'll put an angle on this inside of this center leg. This is the leg that controls the disconnector right here and it rides on this surface of the disconnector right here and it basically pushes it up and holds it in the upward position. As the slide operates in recoil that disconnector runs right along here when it goes into this groove here is where the disconnector resets and then during the rest of the cycle it's under compression and you can see the disconnector sticking up out of the top of the frame in this frame right here and you can push on it and see that it is under spring tension when it is in the compressed position The third leg of the sear spring is what controls the grip safety. And that's what gives spring tension to the grip safety. So, as this spring is placed into the pistol, it's indexed into the notch and set alongside so that it's riding right on the edge of the sear as I showed you earlier. And once the mainspring housing is pushed into place, as I said, it will cause the spring to compress down. And you can see that this leg continues to stay on the sear. This leg has just began to engage the disconnector. And this leg is sticking out. And that's what, like I say, that's what gives you spring tension on your grip safety. If you've got a a grip safety that when it's in when the frame is assembled if you've got a grip safety that's floppy if it doesn't take a positive force to engage it then what you would like to do on that is take this and bend this out more and that will give you this positive engagement so that it requires pressure to push in that grip safety If you're having problems with your sear resetting because of your, disc your disconnector being a little loose or floppy in there, as I said, it should, it should take a positive force to be able to push that disconnector down. If you don't have that, you can add pressure to that disconnector spring by pushing this inwardly. Now one thing that this also will do is this will also add pressure to your trigger pull. So if you have a sub three pound trigger pull on your 1911, you go ahead and also would add pressure to that center leaf. Um, I really wouldn't recommend anything below about three and a half pounds on a uh, 1911. And uh, you can tell that by testing your trigger pull once you've got your uh, assembly completed. But this would be how you would add to the trigger pull. If for some reason you were at five or six pounds of trigger pull, you can decrease that trigger pull by pulling this leg back and taking some of the spring pressure off of it. <coughs> the sear leg, which is this outside leg here, like I say, it controls your sear pressure. And as I said, it'll set on your sear in this configuration here. The sear will engage your hammer like this. This is the configuration the pistol's in when it is in an uncocked position. As your hammer moves back and into a half cock position the sear will engage on this notch right here now as you can see that's a fairly substantial notch it allows for a little bit of play depending on the manufacturer some of them will even have 
a piece of metal that will come down and actually capture the sear so that there's no way that the sear can become disengaged at the half cock position. This particular manufacturer doesn't have that option but they've got quite the shelf for the surfaces of the sear to wiggle around on before it comes out of the half cock position. As the hammer continues back into the fully cocked position the sear will engage these two surfaces right here and as you can see on this particular hammer that's gotten into the cutout that they've allowed for the trigger bow so you're only actually engaging two small surfaces right here and the way that this is properly engaged is this sear has two very finite angles cut in it on both sides what that does is with those angles that are cut in it it allows for a perfectly flat surface to set against these caulking teeth here on the hammer now as the trigger is fired that disconnector is pushed in that releases the hammer and the hammer will fall back to the uncocked position now what I'm going to tell you with these two angles is is unless you absolutely know exactly what you're doing don't mess with these two angles because what can happen is is if they're not cut in there as they should be you can round this tip off and what that will do is that will destroy the engagement on this hammer and what that will allow is that will allow for that hammer to slip off and cause the pistol to accidentally fire so my recommendation to you when you're doing fluff and buffs, polishing, standard cleaning procedures or whatever, do not mess with this portion of the sear unless you absolutely know exactly what you're doing. So, back to All our right frame. Guys, I'm going to try to reshoot this for the third time. Uh, like I say, this little section here, uh, you may notice some difference in focus or um, in the lighting. Uh, you know, it's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to incorporate the audio from when I originally recorded this, but what had happened was it, I got it out of frame. So, we'll go ahead and uh, see what we can do here. Like I say, we've got our mainspring housing installed. You can see that we've got our one leg on the sear. Our second leg is on the disconnector. Our third leg is sticking out waiting for our grip safety to be installed in it. <clears throat> One of the common assembly problems that you'll run into, if people will take their pistol apart and they can't get it to fire, is they will get the sear spring in in this configuration here go ahead and install their mainspring housing in. And what you can see is that this leg that is supposed to be on top of the sear is actually underneath the sear. This portion is on the disconnector where it's supposed to be, and again, this portion is sticking out, waiting for a grip safety to be installed. And what you'll run into with this configuration is, is you cannot get the hammer to reset. So, I don't know if I can get it to do it or not. I'll see if I can induce this malfunction. Okay. Partially put my pin into place. Just enough to hold the grip, the uh, mainspring housing in place. But, people will get this malfunction where they cannot get the hammer to stay back. Cannot get the hammer to stay back. Because this leg of the sear spring is below the sear. That's a very common mistake made on the reassembly. Let me flip that out of the way. So when you're reassembling, the one thing you want to do is engage that spring into the notch and then just set that spring on top. And as you go in, you can see that the spring leg is on top of the sear where it should be. As your mainspring housing goes into place, you can see it goes down and 
again begins to disengage to engage the disconnector. So that's how your shear spring goes in and how it's uh, adjusted. Um, that would be your the uh, malfunction I just showed you would probably be your most common malfunction that you'll see. Go ahead and uh, reassemble this. Just flip the trigger bow down. Install it into the mainspring housing. Take our grip safety and we'll put it into place. We do have to run this back to caulk. We'll install our plunger spring and plungers into the plunger tube. Line up our holes. Reinstall our grip safety. And we'll see how well I can do this since I uh, did not go ahead and remove the slide. I got it in there like a champ. So, once we've done that, go ahead and... I had a question on this. Whether to do this with the hammer up or the hammer down. It really doesn't matter. Most of the time what you'll see me do is with the hammer down and I'll just use my tabletop as a leverage to go ahead and get this pin installed. In this case, I'll do it the opposite way that I normally do it. Just for the sake of argument, to prove that it can be done either way, it's got it back together. Now, since we've messed with our sear spring, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and function test this. First function test we'll do is that the hammer goes back and it does lock back into the back position. We will push on the trigger to see if it will fire without the trigger, without the grip safety engaged, and it will not. We will do the same thing with the grip safety engaged, and it does fire. We'll go ahead and pull that back, flip our thumb safety up, and see if it will fire with the thumb safety engaged, which it will not. That's a good thing. We will disconnect, disengage our thumb safety and make sure that the hammer does not fall, which it did not. <clears throat> now, one thing we will, the next test we'll run involves slingshotting the slide. Basically, the only time that this is a good practice is when you're performing this safety test. Otherwise, it's not recommended on the 1911 that you slingshot the slide and allow it to close under the force of the recoil spring without a uh, round, without a chambering around. And the reason because that is, is what it can do is because there's not a round going into the chamber, which would help slow the slide down, what can happen is, is as that comes in, it pushes down on this disconnector and slaps this sear and slaps this sear around to reset it. And as we've already talked about, you have two very, very finite angles cut into this sear. When you do that, you can damage those angles and round those off. And as we discussed, with those angles rounded off, you basically lose the integrity of this sear to hold the hammer back in position. And at some point, it will cause you to have a discharge when you're not intending it. So, like I say, we'll go ahead and perform this test. We're going to do two things. One, we're going to pull the slide back, allow it to slam forward under the pressure of the recoil spring. We're going to be watching to one, make sure that the hammer does not turn around and follow the slide back down. After we've done that, assuming that the hammer does not follow the slide back down, we will then release the pressure off the trigger and wait to hear a click. Once we hear that click, then we know that the disconnector is properly resetting. So those are the two things that we'll be watching for while we do this test. We'll go ahead and hold our trigger in under pressure with our grip safety engaged, take the slide back, drop it. Our hammer has stayed in the cocked position. 
Now we'll ease our pressure off of the trigger and there was our click for our disconnector re-engaging. So we know that one, our hammer is not dropping and two, our disconnector is resetting. And we can go ahead and dry fire that. If you uh, were ever curious to know if your firing pin was being engaged with the uh, hammer tap, the other thing you can do is use a pencil, a racer in first, engage your grip safety in your trigger, and see if it shoots the pencil out. If it does, then you know you're getting full travel on your firing pin. So anyway, this is the sear spring adjustment, removal, and replacement in redo. I hope you guys find this interesting. We'll talk to you later and have a nice day.